Hello everyone, Andy Gibson from Mind Apples here. And a lot of people ask me what I do that's good for my mind. To which my response is, do you think if I knew that I would have started this big organisation to ask you what you think works for you? I need all the help I can get. But it's only fair that I should play the game too. And in fact, Mind Apples has always been to me a, a rallying point, a flag in the ground to say, if anyone is interested in exploring more about how we can look after our minds, understanding the connection between what we do and how we feel, and trying to unravel the mysteries of why we think, feel and behave the way that we do, then this is the place to do it. And I'm very much part of that. I, I enjoy learning about these things and trying to make sense of it all. So I can share the things that I found work for me. Obviously, it changes a lot from time to time. I've been asked in a lot of different settings, but at the moment, and um, most common things I return to. The first thing is I like to walk. It's the way that I get exercise. I work it into my routine, my day, the things that I'm doing. But I, I live in a city. I live in London and I like walking around cities. I like how quickly they change, seeing the different people, the buildings, the different fields, the different areas of it. And so that that's one of the things that I, I really need to do. If I don't get to go outside, I, I notice it and I need to go and walk somewhere. Second thing is music. I listen to music a lot when I'm walking, but also at home, and I play music as well. All kinds of different styles, genres, I'm just interested in all, all sorts of different types of music. And the great thing about music is it's very personal. It, it evokes memories of different times, places, people that you remember, and so you may have particular songs that evoke different moods that you feel comforted by, and I certainly have a, a go-to set of things that I play when I'm needing to be in certain moods. Third thing is do something I'm good at. Uh, I like to be active and engaged, but also I like to feel like I'm being useful. And so doing something where I feel like I've been able to apply my mind, use my skills, is really good for me. I, I find that if I'm in a bit of a rut or feeling flat, then doing something where I can engage my mind in, 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 in a project, in, in something with an output, really helps me to feel like not just that I've been useful or that I've been motivated and energised, but that things are a bit more meaningful, that there is some kind of uh, tangible achievement for the day. The fourth is I, I want to spend time with people I can be myself with, whether that's uh, just talking to people online or, or, or through messages and groups or, or better still face to face talking to people uh, hanging out. But it's particularly where I don't have to perform, I don't have to put on a front, so I can just be however I am. So I, I really recommend seeking out friends and family who uh, you can be however you want to be with them and you don't have to pretend. I think that's really good for us to be able to feel accepted for who we are. And the fifth and the most important one is give in to temptation at least once a day. This is not a puritanical project. I didn't start Mind Apples to be a list of shoulds, things that you must do. This is about us finding the things that work for each of us and giving ourselves these little treats, these moments of enjoyment and pleasure and relaxation and comfort through the day. So whatever that looks like for you, just find these simple little ways to show yourself some love. And a lot of the research around this, there's, there's a baffling array of things that people say are good for their minds and that people report having positive effects on their well-being. There's good evidence that hugging is good for us, but if I told you to hug whoever is near you, they wouldn't necessarily thank you for that. Um, there is good evidence that retail therapy works. In the short term, buying things on the internet does boost your mood, but it's not a sustainable intervention. You're not going to find a doctor saying, hey, have you considered eBay? And there is even a study that says watching Lord of the Rings is good for alleviating depression, but only if you like Lord of the Rings, otherwise it's a bit depressing. What's much more important in the literature that we base our work on is that whatever you do that's good for your mind will be much better for you if you have chosen it and you enjoy it. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all prescription for us. We each need to think about the things that we enjoy, things that feel like our things, and to give ourselves permission to do those things. Looking after our minds is not simply a luxury to be done after you've finished all of your to-do list. It's a right and important part of being able to show up for whatever you're trying to do, feeling sharp, calm and capable and able to do it at your best. So I encourage everyone to think about what they do. So if you're thinking about your mind apples, please share them with us. Um, send us videos, send us comments, send us links, whatever format you feel comfortable doing. But we would love to hear from you about the things that work for you. And above all, I wish you good mental and physical health. And I hope that you can find some time today to give your mind a bit of love, because I'm sure it will thank you for it. Thanks very much for listening.